Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Holmes. I'm Senior Lecturer in Politics and International Relations in Liverpool Hope University, um, and I specialise in European Union issues. Um, I think one of the key things about the, the referendum from uh, my perspective is about reform of the European Union, uh, and that's kind of got lost in the debate about in or out. Uh, I don't think anybody thinks the European Union is flawless or perfect in any way, uh, and I've talked to many politicians in Brussels and elsewhere uh, about these kinds of issues. Everybody knows that it needs significant reform for the European Union project. Uh, the problem really lies in trying to get agreement on what exactly to reform, and of trying to work out what the best way is to deal with that. Um, one obvious issue that needs to be addressed is the weakness of democracy in the European Union. I think that's one of the most serious issues to try and deal with. It does have a democratic component. I'm not going to try and pretend that the European Union is utterly undemocratic. It's not. It has significant democratic features. But I think power is very concentrated in the hands of the national governments and in the European Commission, rather than in the parliamentary structures, which is normally where we'd expect our democratic components to lie uh, in a political system. And the European Parliament does a lot of really, really good work. Uh, I've also been very impressed at how hard most of the MEPs function when they're working in Brussels or in Strasbourg or wherever. Uh, it goes almost entirely unreported. It goes off the radar. I think that's one of the big difficulties for the European Parliament. And I think also I would suggest there needs to be a stronger mechanism being introduced to allow national parliaments to have a, a bigger voice. Not the individual ones, but the national parliaments working together collectively, uh, because one of the core benefits of the European Union is having a number of countries working together side by side in terms of what they're trying to do. Another area where I would suggest the European Union could really think about engaging in reform is in terms of the economic management and the economic policies being pursued. And I think, again, the Eurozone crisis has revealed the flaws in the single currency project. I don't think a single currency is a bad idea in itself. Um, it's just being implemented at the moment in a very limited way and one that's causing more problems than it's actually solving just at the moment. And I think perhaps this is where the European Union needs to take a step back in order to be able to move forward. Um, I think again there's a question about democratic accountability of institutions like the European Central Bank so that they need to be again more open to scrutiny from members of parliament in, at the European level and at the national level and also there are broader question marks over the direction of economic policy being adopted in the European Union. I'd say overall about reform of the European Union, at the heart of any democratic reform has to be the fundamental idea of one person, one vote. That's pretty much what we base our ideas of democracy on throughout um, uh, democratic states. And in this context, that means it's essential that all citizens of European Union states have an equal say in what happens, rather than one or two big powerful countries and I would certainly be rather worried about the UK's behaviour in that regard, not just the traditional powers such as Germany and France, of trying to impose their own preferred terms and conditions. And I think that's the path we need to go down in order to achieve a reform of the European Union. Could you just explain a bit further how national parliaments would work together? I didn't quite understand that. How could they work together? There is a mechanism that already exists in the European Union framework. It hasn't been greatly used, where national parliaments can liaise together, uh, have meetings, have discussions um, about policies that they are unhappy with, and if a sufficient number of national parliaments are against those policies, uh, then they can introduce a delaying mechanism or even a full blocking mechanism. So again, it's giving a certain degree of, uh, of power back to the national level alongside the European Parliament. Now that's hardly been used at all, and I suppose there is of course a difficulty of getting 28 countries, uh, or enough of the national parliaments of tw amongst 28 countries to work together in this regard, um, but that is, uh, there is a mechanism that does exist for this. Thank you.